Welcome to St. Augustine this evening, the Mike Davis Show. We are so glad that you are here with us today. It's Monday. Amanda and I had a great weekend. Woohoo! We had a wonderful time at the Luau, which we, we will tell you all about the Luau. Mm -hmm. And uh, those guys at Task Force Hydro One you got it. did an amazing <laughs> job. Well, when you don't mess me up and tell me 10 times before the show the mm -hmm. wrong thing to say, you're so all devious my fault. about that. All my fault. <laughs> it is. Barbara Jean, do we have a question for you later mm -hmm. on today? It's all a Barbara Jean question in, in five questions. Yes, we do. So hang in there, Barbara Jean. Um, we'll get you. Yes. So we got two quick reads today, mm -hmm. uh, opening their doors in 2008. Mm -hmm. Brightway Insurance, the Casey Agency, has proudly stood by their customers through hurricanes, major floods, hail, and fires. Through these events, the agency has become a much-needed insurance resource in times of trouble and hardship. Honesty and integrity are the pillars of their core values, says owner Ashley Casey, and they pride themselves on being insurance experts while developing strategies that help their clients meet their insurance needs. Look, if you haven't gotten your insurance lately, you need an insurance expert on your side, and the Casey Agency, Rightway Insurance, can do that for you. Give them a call. They're great agents over there. They'll help you navigate through this crazy insurance world that we have here in Florida. Mm -hmm. um, but I highly recommend you give Brightway Insurance, the Casey Agency, a call. I do every year because they insure the show. Absolutely. And this entire show is brought to you by Moultrie Diner and Anastasia Diner. Woohoo! Mainly because they're great sponsors and two, mm -hmm. because I haven't been there in two weeks and I feel guilty about <laughs> missing. They're absolutely awesome. I, I just, we've been so busy and we've been traveling mm -hmm. and I apologize to everyone there. I'm not mad at anyone. I'm coming Saturday morning, 6.30, <laughs> 7 o'clock. You be have there. been warned. I promise. <laughs> Those of you that don't like the wait on me, just wait till 7.15. Yeah. They all like us. They're amazing waitresses at the Anastasia Diner. And the great thing about it is like going, it's like old St. Augustine, all these, mm -hmm. uh, Folks that you've known for years or haven't seen in a while are always there on Saturday and Sunday morning. And it's just so much fun to run into St. Augustinians mm -hmm. that have St. been here a while, including St. you. You would be a St. Augustinian fun. as well. I've been here 20 years, 21 years, 20 years. You're, you're not a rookie anymore. I'm not a rookie. You're not a veteran, but you're not a rookie. You're kind of in between. I know to go old Moultrie and not US1. Uh, yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. I will tell you, though, if you leave here now at 6 o'clock, it's like mm -hmm. there's no traffic at 6.15. Yeah, it's not bad. You're leaving a little later at 6.30 because you have, like, producer work. That yeah. I'm, like, out the door. Yeah. <laughs> All right. As I've been here since 7 o'clock. Yeah, and I have not been. <laughs> no, no, a long day. All right. Yep. Uh, the second annual uh, Grand Luau mm -hmm. was grand, and it was a luau, and it was amazing, and it was fun. Did you and Louie have a good time? We had a fantastic time. I, I thought it was great. It was uh Kind of, I, I knew Ricky and Enrique mm -hmm. and uh, Leo. Yep. Uh, I knew Ricky's wife. I knew a few other people that were there. Mm -hmm. It's one of the rare things I've been to that it's like, I did not know like 30 people there. Yeah. Which is great. It means that they have <laughs> tied into that uh, veteran mm -hmm. first responder community that's surfers. Yeah. I did recognize a few people there as surfers. So I, okay. I checked the box of, yes, I know Eric Norton was there. And it was really good to see him as well. But mm -hmm. you know, I just got to say, it was a great event. I thought it was it really, really well was. done. The food was good. Um, yeah. The uh, silent auction prizes were good. The The speaker mm -hmm. was amazing. It's fantastic. He he was short to the point. <laughs> it's not, concise. Not He's stature. funny. I do not yeah. mean like Pete Melfi short. I mean, his speech was short. Yeah. Everything you want in a speaker. <laughs> Everything you want in a speaker. And it was a great story. Yeah, he I had a great story. I did not get a chance story. to tell that story today to the office staff, mm -hmm. but I'm I'm going to save that story and tell it one day. I might save yeah. it for our Friday meeting. Yeah. Because we usually have a bunch of guys there, and we, we get through work fast, and then we can kind of talk about other things. But mm -hmm. that was a, I mean, I'd love, I'm trying to get him on the show mm -hmm. to talk about his experiences. Yeah. Having served that would in, be really in cool. Vietnam, um, uh, also in the hostage rescue, mm -hmm. the failed attempt in Iran, mm -hmm. and then all the way up through Desert Storm. Yep. I mean, God, he was, he's tough. Yeah, I would real. not want to mess with him. It was... And he's older than me. I would not mess with him yeah, at all. Yeah, Rich Rice's story <laughs> was fantastic. One of yep. the founding members of Delta Force. And um, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, you're right. He had a concise story, but it was it was powerful and it was an honor to be in the room with all of those great men and women that have served our country, served our communities. It's first responders and military. So these are great people that need our support and love. And it was an honor to be there with them. I got to tell you, there's events I go to. And I'm like, I mm -hmm. hope there's security. Yeah, it's not I that went one. to that event and I was like, I feel pretty good. I'm the safest dude I'm in the, the room. I'm the safest guy in the room. <laughs> yeah. Because everybody else in here knows what to do. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I thought it was, I, listen, I thought those guys were great. <laughs> and it was fun to, to watch um, uh, Task Force Hydro dancers. 1. And the hula dancers were really good, too. They were awesome. Uh, they were Ricky fantastic. came up to me, oh, we're going to volunteer you to go up there. I said, no, you are not. <laughs> no one will ever come to this event again. Mm -hmm. I'm the worst dancer ever. They would come just to see you next year. Elaine Bennis is a better dancer than I am. <laughs> Elaine but everybody dance. enjoys watching Elaine dance because of that. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I think they enjoy laughing at Elaine, but I don't know. What's we cool just about added a sixth question? Okay. What's cool about the hula dancers that come there? Um, it's from a school of Polynesian descendants um, that know the history of the different regions of hula dance. And so they kind of explain a little bit about the differences between yep. Hawaiian hula dance and Tunisia, Tahitian hula dance, as well as New Zealand, mm -hmm. and explain to you a little bit of what's typical, what the story is telling you, and then um, then they show us, and it's cool. I thought they were wonderful. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, as someone who can't dance, I'm always amazed at people that can dance, yeah. and so, yes. Mm -hmm. And people up there performing from, I think, about five to probably their 70s. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I've yeah. some, some up there, yeah. yeah. That wasn't counting the guys that went up and performed. Yes. <laughs> Some of them were pretty good, but... The final dance is always special. <laughs> uh, the yeah, I think that was the one they were trying to get me in, and I was like, no. Yeah. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Next year. Mm -mm. <laughs> mm. No, for them to get me to dance, mm. somebody's got to donate a big pile of money. <laughs> you heard it, Leo. <laughs> you know what you got to do. get somebody <laughs> to donate a big pile of money, I will dance. Other than that, the answer <laughs> is no. I'm, if I'm going to go make a fool of myself, I'm going to make some money for, for Task Force Hydro. Three times. Almost nailed it. <laughs> right, I'm so good. Yeah, so uh, that was it. I thought it was really fun. It was yeah. great seeing you and and, uh, and Louie as well. It's always fantastic to mm -hmm. hang out with Darcy and you too. Yeah, I, I, and me too. You <laughs> guys too. got that, right? Darcy's yeah. the draw. Darcy's 100% the draw. We yeah. were driving home afterwards. We, we had to get navigate the downtown. Mm -hmm. and we were in the Jeep and... Um, I'm watching the traffic flow and I go through the downtown at night regularly. So I kind of got mm -hmm. this, which lane to be in yeah. to get around and to get through. We got halfway to the bridge and Darcy said, that was really impressive because I would still be at the light at Ripley's. <laughs> it's like, he's got to understand gotta what lane you got to be in to get to where you're yep. going. We were right behind you. It was an impressive sight. No, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where'd you guys go? Uh, we ended up going out afterwards because uh -huh. uh, we had childcare. And yeah. so, like, you're not going to waste that at 8 p.m. Um, so, yeah, we went to Carabas and just had a couple of drinks and some appetizers. It's close to home. And then we got, we went home after. Listen, that. had you had gone home early, that would have been, and I love that it was over by 8 15. Mm hmm. Events Perfect that end, <laughs> events that end around my bedtime are absolutely mm -hmm. amazing for yeah. me. So I, I'm not a late night person anymore. Well, I had worked a gig with Clay and um, some others uh, Friday morning. Mm -hmm. And so I was up uncharacteristically early for me on a Friday. So, you know, we didn't stay out too late, <laughs> too much later Ooh. than you guys. But we definitely had another drink and some, some appetizers at Carabas just because it was close. Uh, we also need to give another update, another community yes, update. Uh, the Montessori School had their mm -hmm. fundraiser on Friday. Yep. And I saw you on Saturday and you mm -hmm. gave me an update. I didn't yes. pay any attention to it. I just <laughs> smiled and nodded. Yes. Um, but today you gave me an update. And I, wow, that's pretty mm -hmm. close. How are they doing? So they're at $10,333. Okay. Um, I don't know if they've added in the money from the Friday event. It was about $870 that they raised at the Friday event. So they're within $1,000 so of their goal. Yeah. Okay. They're within $1,000. We can get them there, guys. We can do this.
Can you put the link back out on I the, can. On the page it. again? That way, mm -hmm. if, if somebody is so desired yes. uh, to, uh, to donate to them, they can. They were reaching out to see if I had contact information that I could give them for people. I can talk to you about it after the show. Okay, we can definitely <laughs> do that. Yeah, we need the Utes to get yeah. there. Mm -hmm. We would love for our Utes to, to place, win, yeah. place, or show. Yes. So this is, it is a really big deal that they made it all the way to Worlds because they're in one of the smaller regions of Odyssey of the Mind in Florida. Mm -hmm. yep. And so the fact that they beat out some of, like, they were talking around NASA, the Cocoa Beach area, um, the fact that they beat those, those folks out, they beat out the well-funded people in the South. The link always wants to tag a friend, replace a word for mind and... <laughs> Don't tag a friend. I'm trying very hard to not tag Don't a friend. Don't tag a friend. <laughs> All right. So that link should be out there for you guys if you want to donate, if you're able. If you don't know what we're talking about, Odyssey of the mm -hmm. Mind, watch our Wednesday show. You'll see the kids. They were fantastic. They were a lot of fun. And um, you'll see that link. Uh, more information about Odyssey of the Mind and the link to donate. And how was your mother's day? My mother's day Were you mothered and pampered and taken care of by your I children? I had to work. Life? That's the trouble with working ah, at a church. You got to work on Sundays. You have to work on Sundays. So mm -hmm. Sunday holidays. So I have to work and my van died on Saturday. And so poor Clay had to come and get me so that he wasn't alone. I mean, maybe my van was trying to get me the Sunday off by taking my ride away. Mm -hmm. And I, I got a ride anyway by Clay. So Clay had to come to my house. So I had to wake up even earlier to come to my house and get me and then drop me off afterwards. Might have made him late for Prohibition Kitchen. So shout out to Clay for Clay making rocks. sure I got where I needed to go and I wasn't stranded and I got to get home. Um, fans ready to go? Maybe? We'll see. We're going to see. Yeah. Amanda looked at the show ends at six. Mm -hmm. She says uh, we have to be there by seven mm -hmm. if we can make it. Yeah. Suddenly I felt like Bo and Luke <laughs> Felt like Burt Reynolds uh -huh. and Jerry, what was Jerry's last name? Not Orbach? No, not Jerry <laughs> Orbach. No, no. Not Jerry, Law and Order? <laughs> Jerry Orbach was in um, uh, Dirty Dancing. Yes. He was the, the dad, dad in Dirty, Dirty Dancing. Dancing and in Law and Order for Law a long order. time. Yeah. Lenny he was in Law and Order. He was Lumiere in Jerry's, Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, and I can't think of Jer Jerry's last Jer Thank you, Bobby. Bobby Rocks. Yeah. Jerry, Jerry Reed. Reed. Yeah, he actually right sang the song for Smokey and the Bandit. <laughs> nice. It's a great song. I just saw Leo pop up. Give us a, an update on your paddle. It was 50-mile paddle. Oh, my gosh. And your fundraising. You gave the update at the Luau, but I don't remember the numbers, and I don't want to give the wrong information. Yeah, Leo, let us know. And and I got talking to Leo and Ricky yeah. um, Saturday night because I was driving at around noon up US-1 North to get to uh, Julington Creek. Mm-hmm. I had two or three gusts of wind that almost pushed the Jeep into another lane or off the side of the road. Yeah. I was not in open water. I was not paddling and I was not, and these guys uh, uh, went ahead and I think beached at the uh, Ponte Vedra Inn and Club mm -hmm. and were able to, I think the club gave them towels and drinks and snacks That's and stuff. Nice. Listen, club is great. They are. Those guys are awesome up there. But anyway, uh, yeah, they did kind of let that squall line go by and that squall That's line nice. was pretty rough. That squall line almost almost uh, ruined our event. <laughs> Clay and Dan and and the whole team had spent all this time setting up all this AV gear. I think it was our second or third speaker in mm -hmm. to a convention hall situation, and it started it started glitching out our AV. So well, you know these guys are fun because they stopped at during the storm mm -hmm. while paddling at the Ponte Vedra Club. Or some snacks and margaritas. <laughs> yeah, this baby. Is my kind of guys <laughs> and girls. I mean, you could have texted. I would have come for that. Yes. <laughs> I can't do the 50 mile paddle, oh, but I can drink halfway I up. <laughs> well, that's what the support boat is there for to find drinks yeah. in an emergency. Okay. Great support boat. I'm a decent swimmer. I mm -hmm. could swim margaritas to you if yeah. I get a head start. <laughs> and Surf Quest had a good surf day. Yeah. And the waves were small that day. Water temps come up, so it's a little bit warmer. It's about 76 right now, maybe mm -hmm. 77. Yeah. So, Bobby, that's awesome that you guys have that. All right. And nice. And Leah they, says they raised over 50000 Nice. That is awesome, guys. Uh, you guys keep so on knocking it that. out of the park. Yeah. 
thank you for everything that you do. Mm -hmm. And we are happy to help in any way that we can. In the surf world, mm -hmm. that's like being in three different barrels on the same wave. I don't get it, but I Leo guess it's good. It. Leo, tell me you got it. <laughs> guess Leo, it's good. <laughs> Leo, tell me that was good. You're in three different barrels on the same wave. Just tell me. Yes. I'd like to survive. That's what I do when mm -hmm. I'm on a surfboard yeah. is I just try to survive. I don't even try to stand up. I tried that. It didn't go. <laughs> and Andy, I have, uh, earlier apologized for not having been there for a couple of weeks. I've been out of town mm -hmm. and then we had a lot of stuff going on this weekend. So Sorry. I'll be in Saturday morning early, brother. Yeah. Hopefully before you have to go to the Moultrie Diner. You've been warned. Yep. Yeah, a man is like, well, the staff's not going to come in early now. <laughs> this has been a record number of call-outs. We don't know why. <laughs> uh, I know. I know, I know. All right, uh, so we had that. We also had, um, oh, I got an email today. An email. I got an email. So I need your help as, from as a politician? devoted listeners to this show. <laughs> Somehow, I have been uh, subscribed to the Joe Biden campaign uh, email list. I'm just sad I wasn't the one that did it. <laughs> I, I didn't do it. I'm I not can't sure take credit. you didn't do it. I know it wasn't Davey. He's too nice to me. I do know that if Charlie Crist announces a run, mm. I'm signing you up. <laughs> well, he's going to announce a run because he's not done. He isn't dead yet, which means he hasn't stopped running. Right on. So I always get these emails that start out Davis. It's not my first name. It's my last name because somebody entered Can't it in confirm. backwards, yeah. right? <clears throat> Davis, it's Joe. And I go, oh, no, not again. Please, not again. <laughs> anyway, um, they're talking about how uh, they're grassroots donors. So trying to reach out to the little guy. Yeah. The $25 contributor, mm -hmm. right? Wanting to let them know there's a new contest. Yeah. And all you have to do is contribute $25 and your name is going in this contest. <clears throat> now, I don't want to meet Joe Biden. No. I got no desire. I just don't. I understand I mean, he's I, my president. I just don't want to meet him. You're a dude of a certain age. I think you're safe. I just don't want to meet him. All right. I just don't. I'm okay. My life will be complete without having met him. All right. I honestly don't really have a burning desire to meet Donald Trump either. So yeah. I don't, it's not like I'm one-siding this thing. I just, Tim Pool just met Donald Trump. I think that's wonderful for Tim. He said Poole. it was hilarious. Yeah, I think that's wonderful. That he's a funny guy. I don't know. Yeah, uh, yeah Andy says, what, yeah, I rode by the diner. We had to go to public Saturday morning <laughs> to pick up food for a, a brunch at my son's house, which mm -hmm. is why I wasn't at the diner Saturday. I yeah. couldn't go to diner breakfast and then go to brunch. Yes. Anyway. Diner um, coffee, then brunch? No, I, I would I would have felt bad making them come back and refill my coffee mug 12 times right. and only paying for one. <laughs> um, but if you get in this brand new contest, yeah. you will get flown to Los Angeles. Again, someplace I have no desire to go. Unless it's the Los Angeles airport on the way to Australia to visit my daughter. Mm -hmm. And then it's just to get out of one concourse Hopefully walk to another one without getting mugged and get back on a plane. <laughs> You're not even stopping for a Cinnabon in no, LAX? I don't, no, I'm not stopping for a Cinnabon. Um, the best part of international travel no. is the Cinnabon in the airport. <laughs> yeah. I, I think Charlie Crist is actually, he's very disappointed. He wanted to be RFK Jr.'s running mate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did he announce his running mate? Yes. Okay. Uh, some woman from Silicon Valley that's mega uber rich. Oh, that's not going to help him. No. Uh, so you will be flown to Los Angeles. You will meet three people. You will get to meet President Obama. Now, I got to tell you, I don't have any desire to meet Joe Biden. Obama, maybe. Yeah. I have questions. <laughs> I have questions. I just have some questions. They would be polite questions. They'd be reasonable questions. But I just have questions. Yeah. Number one, did you expect it to work this well? Okay. I don't know if he'd get it, but do, yes. Nicole Sheridan. Sher Shanna, Shanna, Hanna, 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 It's like that <laughs> A-N kept going as Susan was <laughs> typing, but I'm sure she's got it right because she's smart. Yeah. Um, you also get to meet Julia Roberts. Eh. What an interesting mix. Eh. Yeah. I'm not. She's not your type? Meeting people who pretend to be other people. <laughs> who then don't live a real life who tell me how to live. I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm fine. Okay. I'm okay. I don't, 
those type stars, some athletes that have done amazing things on and off the field, yeah, I wouldn't mind meeting them. Mm -hmm. But Hollywood stars, eh. Because it's them. It's not like it, it's Bradley not, Cooper playing one no, of them. No, it's not the people you see on the screen, <laughs> except yeah. for John Wayne and Clint Eastwood. Although Clint Eastwood and I did have a falling out after Bridges of Madison. That was a terrible movie. I didn't watch I it. I saw that as a 10-year-old. No. Mm -mm. 10-year-old, 11-year-old, no. something like that. Mm. And I don't know why I wanted to watch it so much. It's probably excellent marketing. Um, I was so disappointed. Mm -hmm. As a... As a girl going into puberty, like loving all romance stories, watching two old people have an affair was so skeevy. <laughs> it was just not what the commercials uh, led me to believe. Uh, honestly, were you sitting in the theater going, if this is what I have to look forward to, I don't want to grow up? <laughs> I don't want to grow up. I don't want to grow up. <laughs> I'm going this Peter Pan. I'm out. <laughs> the Lost Boys. I don't want to uh, stand naked on my front porch. Uh. <laughs> no, Taylor Swift, not yet Barbara Jean, but I expect sometime in October for her to be a part of this. At which time know. this one will be running to give Joe Biden twenty five dollars. If she's if she's smart, she'll just continue to not speak on politics yeah. while the Eras tour is still yeah. doing its thing. You know, we haven't mentioned Taylor Swift in three days on the show. Tim Cosgrove pops up and it's right there. <laughs> Taylor Swift. <laughs> Taylor, all right. So the last one is George Clooney. Okay. So I want is there anybody out there that would pay the $25 to Biden's presidential campaign to get into a lottery to go be flown to L.A., potentially meet President Obama, Julia Roberts, and George Clooney? Is this enough to entice you for $25? Give Joe Biden money so that you can fly to meet other people as far away from Biden as possible. <laughs> it's an interesting It doesn't even say that he's going to be there. I know. You you get to go meet other people, but not him. I just yeah. picked up on that. You picked up on it before I did, and I brought this in here. We can't promise he'll survive the flight to California, so you're not meeting Joe. But you can you're meet not, Obama. You're literally Julia not going to meet Joe. You're and gonna George Clooney. Suddenly, it's a little more intriguing. <laughs> I got to say. So, George. There's an upside to that for George me. and Julia are really good friends from their time um, filming Ocean's 11. 12, 13, 14, 17. Well, they did 29. 11 and 12. Yeah. And so, like, they they share a compound. At some point, mm -hmm. Julia Roberts' house was under construction and they were yeah. in the same compound with their families. So, they're good friends. So, it might be fun to watch them be silly together because. Yes. They prank each other, and that's kind of like their rapport. But like, I w I don't care that much. I Not don't. even twenty five dollars. Now, if you told me twenty five dollars would get me into a lottery to go to Kid Rock's house where I can shoot guns, I'm all in. I'm you want to shoot guns? Go to Nugent's house. He'll take you up in a helicopter, and you can kill pigs. I want to come out a lot. <laughs> I fear he's for got, my, he's I got still one of those fear for my life big old giant Nugent. Gatling yes. guns. I, I, mean, I still fear for my life with Ted Nugent. I'm not going to lie. So it's anyway, fair. I will continue to bring you all kinds of information from the uh, Joe Biden campaign. Uh, but that was not enough to entice me to want to get in. Meryl Streep was in her 40s when she filmed that movie. Yeah, you're closer to her age than you think. I'm probably, I could be older <laughs> than her. But when I was 10, it was like she was my grandma. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm looking that up. You're going to look it up. How old is Meryl mm -hmm. Streep? And then do the math backwards because you know how old you are. Minus 10 years, you can figure this out. A sexist would say even a woman could figure that out. I'm not doing the math. I'm just searching <laughs> it. You just give it the She's math 46. <laughs> okay, I am younger than Meryl Streep <laughs> in Bridges of Madison County, but I wouldn't have an affair with a 65-year-old man standing naked on my front porch. Clint Eastwood wasn't 65 back then. He was. Clint was Eastwood he? was 65 and she was 46. Wow. Yes. Let's ask someone who's an expert. Susan Johnson and Barbara Jean, would you have had an affair with Clint Eastwood when you were in your 40s and he was in his 60s? Not counting the fact that you were happily married at the time or not, just hypothetically. Um, Clint Eastwood, I, Clint Eastwood never did it for it me. make it fair, Tim Cosgrove, would you have ever had an affair with uh, Meryl Streep? Clint Eastwood never did it for me. Really? No. Even like now looking back, his son though, so I get it because his son is hot. So like maybe when he was really young, but I have no context for Did him in like the 70s. Did you ever see him in Rawhide? No. 
Yeah, you should go back and watch about Susan Johnson, <laughs> a resounding yes, but without all caps. So I made the resounding <laughs> part up, but yes. All right. See? I mean, Robert Redford would have gotten me before I knew his politics when I was younger. It's pretty. I, he was a pretty good. Robert Redford was a good looking dude, but Paul Newman Clint Eastwood wasn't bad either. Always seemed granddad to me. Timmy said, "Tim says, what the heck." <laughs> he said, "You're gonna have an affair with Clint Eastwood?" No, with Meryl Streep. <laughs> I asked him about Meryl Streep. All right, I, I flipped it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Barbara Jean has standards. Sam Elliott only. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you on this. If I had to pick between Clint Eastwood or Sam Elliott, I would definitely pick I've seen Sam Amanda's Elliott. list of five people. Three of them are Sam Elliott. Nah. At least two of them are Hemsworths. Yeah. <laughs> John John Wayne, man, what a... Yeah? I, he, him, I would have flown across the country, paid my own fare, and given a large donation to meet John Wayne. Yeah. Man, I loved every one of John Wayne's movies. They were all great. So Clint Eastwood looks like his son now in mm -hmm. Rawhide. So, like, I get that. Mm -hmm. I just had no context for that. So he just always seemed very granddad to me. Yep. Sorry. Yeah. Although Sean Connery, regardless of his age. <laughs> just Sean Connery. Sean Connery. You had me at Sean. Sean Connery and Sam Elliott. I mean, yeah. those are the two old dudes that, like, I don't care. I don't care how old. Uh, there are sirens there outside, are sirens. so Pete Melfi's on the run somewhere. No, I'm just kidding. Robert Redford with the mole. Bobby, don't be mean. I know. <laughs> Sean Connery now. I'm with you, Mary Ellen. Sean Connery at any age <laughs> yeah. for women. I mean, it's at he any age. He was hot, yeah. dude. I can't yeah. end the brogue. I don't even care about the interview where he said sometimes you have to smack a chick. I don't care. Sherry's <laughs> John Wayne's feet are too small. No, it was just his, his chest was so big his feet looked small. It's not sturdy in a windstorm. That's what I'm hearing. Not sturdy in a windstorm. <laughs> I know. He, he had some great. He and Maureen O'Hara had some great movies together. Yeah. Quiet Man. I saw that one. McClintock. I don't know if I saw Which was basically the Quiet Man done out west with a little more. And then there's the one open. where he teaches the teaches the boy to swim. I've seen that scene a lot. Teaches the boy to swim. Oh, that yeah. might have been. Was that McClintock? That was, no, that was. Uh, I believe that was Hondo. Yeah. That was where a, she's like, he doesn't a, know how to swim. He doesn't. He throws, throws him, in him in the water. That was Hondo. That was he the big that thing. Kid the, so far. <laughs> it was a 3D movie. So if you watch it today, it's not 3D, but there's about 17 <laughs> scenes in it where things are coming right at you, which is supposed yeah. to make you go, ah. ah. Yeah. And it's back when the, you know, they had a 3D craze in the 50s and 60s, and mm -hmm. then it went away, and then it came back in the terrible. 90s. Yeah. And it's like, People are like, oh, I'm going to see such and such in 3D. I'm like, did you not see the yeah. stuff in 3D, 30 years? Oh, the technology's better. Yeah. Well, if it was so much better, where did it go again? I think the last movie I saw in 3D was Avatar mm -hmm. in the theaters, 3D. The rest of my party wanted to go to the, the 3D one. It's like, okay, cool. And then I was just disappointed because it was like, all I heard was about how amazing and crisp and realistic this other world was mm -hmm. and how cool that was. But in 3D, it's everything's blurry. Even yeah. with the glasses, it's still blurry. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, they spent all that time to render this beautifully crisp, clear CGI world that was supposed to be this amazing experience, and it was so cloudy in 3D. Barbara Jean has asked for a timeout. Oh, she's got <laughs> things to do. <laughs> so for me, the, well, the old uh, old movie stars. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I say old, I mean in in the 40s. Ingrid Bergman. Yeah, absolutely gorgeous in Casablanca. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Uh, later in life, not not so much. You know what? We don't all age know, like you, Mike. I'm not aging well. I'm getting older every day. But Ingrid Bergman and Casablanca. You don't look a day older than the day I met you. We just met last week. <laughs> yeah. See, that's at least three or four I days. I know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't get the Susan Johnson <sighs> doesn't like the Brits. That's all right. Now he's not British. He's Scottish. Scottish. I know. Still from the Isles. I had, he's not American enough for Susan. John so I Wayne. had a friend, he's passed away now, but he had this wild life where he met all kinds of people, just mm -hmm. like happened to be seated at a table with them or whatever. Yes. And one of them was Sean Connery. He was, he was like masters of ceremonies of some event that, so he was seated right next to Sean Connery. So he got to have dinner with Sean Connery. I, 
So we've kind of gone off the rails on actors. So far. So far <laughs> off the rails, right? Yeah. So here's a question. For all the women out there, mm-hmm. the Magnificent Seven. Was the new Western, one or the old the one? The old Magnificent okay. Seven. Because we're into old actors. Mm-hmm. Which of the actors did you find was the most attractive? For the guys out there, we'll just go st- straight to Charlie's Angels. You've got four or five <laughs> angels to pick from. So just let me know which angels. So that way, each Let's one of see. you has kind of the... Your, your own, I have to uh, look it up just to figure out who is in it. Uh, <laughs> I, know, I know. I can tell you all of them. But that doesn't mean I can see them. Let's yes. see. Davey, I don't get that. Me. Davey Hartzell says me. Ah. Oh. Let's see. Yep, Melissa. I knew that be Yul Brenner. Yeah, Yul Brenner, uh, Steve McQueen. Okay. Charles Bronson. Uh, Cast. Uh, Lee. God, dang it. Let's see. It wasn't Lee Marvin. It was Lee. Um, oh, my gosh. I'm Movies.fandom.com sucks, yeah, by the way. There was a lot of really good actors in that. That's it. IMDb. Yep. I'm leaving moviefandom.com. You I'm suck. just curious. Right now we have one Yul Brenner, not Steve McQueen. Yul Brenner. I, so I only ever saw Yul Brenner in The King and I. Mm-hmm. And I. like. Van Cleef wasn't in that one. Melissa, he was in uh, all of the movies with, um, uh, I think, uh, Once Upon a Time. Was it not Once Upon a Time? He was not. He was in none of them. I mean, Yul Brenner's in good Johnson's shape. Susan Johnson's at none of them. She wanted Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid to be the question. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> That's what she was looking for, Butch Cassidy and the Paul Sundance Newman. Kid. Paul Newman. Yeah. No, it was. Butch, yeah. Sa- Butch Cassidy and Sundance yes. Kid. Wasn't that Robert Redford Robert and Vaughan, Paul thank Newman? You. James Colburn. That's who I was looking for. Bobby's like saving my, Bobby's bailing me out today. I'm not seeing anybody that I'm interested in. Okay. I'm with Susan Johnson. I mean. And Yul Brenner was in Westworld and he was scary as can be. I think he was the same actor as yeah. he was in uh, The Magnific- Magnificent Seven. Spoke a little less, but he still looked just a bit. Like tough, I wouldn't mess with him. Yeah, I'm, I'm at least none of you women and ladies said Eli Wallach. I'm glad for that. <laughs> he was the bad guy. He's the bad guy. The great bad guy too. He was I mean, wonderful. If I had to pick somebody, I would go with Worst Buckholtz. Who is Worst Buckholtz? Chico. Oh, you're going for the young kid. Why not? Okay. Like I can see that. Yeah. All right. You've met my husband. <laughs> I met Louie. Yeah. Louie's a cool dude. He is. Okay. Um, Before we get to five Mm -hmm. questions, uh, there was a man in California. (laughs) This is epic. This is absolutely um, wonderful. This is malicious compliance. Yes. Beautifully represented. Uh, When ETN Constable of Seaside received Mm. a... ETN Constable is the guy's name as House of Seaside received a nasty letter... From code enforcement, oh, no. informing him that municipal code required that his boat be screened on the side yard mm-hmm. and front by a six foot high fence. Yeah. Or else he should be fine. Oh, no. The 29 year old resident who says these young kids today aren't smart <laughs> decided that he would comply, but with a delightful bit of trolling of the Ooh, local with officials. With a twist. Constable erected a fence, but told, as told by, uh, but got his neighbor, who's an artist, to paint a mural on the front of the fence. Now, he said he originally <laughs> wanted to put a nasty slogan yeah. at the people causing him to do this. Yeah. But he said, you know what? I figured I'd get a little more creative. Mm-hmm. So he had his neighbor, who's an artist, paint a mural of the boat sitting in the driveway on the fence. Malicious compliance it at its best. is epic. It's awesome. This guy is a hero. <laughs> He's, they will write songs about you, sir. He is a hero. <laughs> right I love now, it. some folk singer should be writing a song about him. That's great. Yep. I'm not a rule breaker, but I like to make a political statement as necessary, mm-hmm. as well as a humorous and creative statement. So yep. many times people take this stuff over the top in a horrible way. Like I might have written two words on there yeah. with an exclamation with some several names underneath it. Mm-hmm. 
not nearly as creative as what Mr. Costner. So what I think he happened is awesome. Is yes. that he was talking to his his artist neighbor, and mm -hmm. can you believe they're gonna do yep. this? So yeah, I'm gonna build the stupid fence, and I'm gonna write "f you" on it. And he's like, "Oh no, no, my friend, no. <laughs> we can make this epic." Yes. <laughs> Hold my beer. And this is what happens. I think I fully support this. When you can make fun of people being dictatorial and just over the top on the rules. Yeah. And you, I mean, do you, the, the artist probably has been called by 20 other people. Oh, for sure. Who have had to build a fence. Like, I uh -huh. want the same thing. You're going to drive through this town <laughs> in six months and all you're going to see is murals of boats on the front of fences. Congratulations, sir. This is your career now. <laughs> I love it. Dude, this is fantastic. Yeah. I love it. I mean, because HOAs are... I don't think it's an HOA. I think it's the town. Code enforcement. I, it's basically the same thing. Mm -hmm. this, they're all about majoring in the minors, yeah. right? And harassing people about mm -hmm. the smallest junk while things go completely horrific in another part of the neighborhood or whatever, and it's just completely ignored. It, if the apocalypse Ugh. started zom with zombies or without, yeah, there are people in the HOA that a weekend to not having power mm -hmm. would be would be walking up to their neighbors and saying, "You're not allowed to have your windows and doors open." Yeah, you have to start cutting your grass. Well, yeah. we don't have gasoline anymore. The HOA rules say you have to cut your grass. Cut it with scissors. We're all starving to death. It doesn't matter. Your grass is too high. Yeah. Yeah. There was a video that went around. Someone got a ring doorbell installed just because there was an a tiny little insignificant human on the HOA board who is angry about the packages in front of this man's house. Oh, and he gracious. run, I think he ran some business or he worked from his home. And so he was constantly getting work packages and having to ship work packages out. So yep. he would bring in the deliveries immediately, but he would put them out for pickup for the next round. So there was packages in front of his house and they can't be there for longer than X number of hours. And so this guy literally comes and scolds this man through his ring doorbell. So he of course yeah. recorded it and put yeah. it on the internet. It's like a two and a half minute long video of this man just whining about the packages. He's like, well, the packages haven't been there that long. These are different packages than the ones you saw delivered. Like this, this whole thing and the dude's just, Oh, so huffy and so angry. It's like, how wonderful is your life that the only hill you have to die on is the length of time packages sit on the front doorstep of your neighbor's house? I don't. Must be so I blessed. don't think when you were put here <laughs> that that's the reason God put you here. Yeah, I there don't are think so many other things you could mm -hmm. be doing that could be helping other people. Counting packages and the time that packages are on a on a doorstep is not improving the world one day. No. You could be so much more useful. So yeah. much more. There's just nasty grams about the height of grass. Really? <laughs> yeah, people ask me, so, you know, why don't you live inside this community or that community? I said, I'm not living in a community. Yeah. I'm not. Uh -huh. I said, my neighbor has a right. They want to paint their house whatever color. I'll just mm -hmm. build a bigger hedgerow. Yeah. So I don't have to see it. We live Spirit. in a neighborhood with a fairly inexpensive HOA and... Um, they're pretty reasonable. And so we've, we haven't gotten any nasty grams. And so you're in the neighborhood that Troy and Gina used to live in. So okay. don't worry. They've taken care of that HOA. Fantastic. They've broken them in. The president is right down the street from us and he yeah. always has cars parked in front of his house, which is against HOA rules. Yep. And so, you know, he, he can't really harass us too much because then it's mm -hmm. like, okay, well get all of the vehicles in your driveway. Yeah. <laughs> Fine uh, by me. <laughs> by the way, every one of you sh that's on this show should have VIP tickets to the Florida Man Games. You should get them now before they're unavailable. I should probably just um, buy the bullet and buy the tickets, and that way I don't have to work. <laughs> uh, Last year, I was no. like, I can't afford tickets. I'll volunteer. No, I, I like saw one of the memos yeah. on the desk here that mm -hmm. you're in charge of all the security next year. Yeah, that's that tracks. If I was you, I would accept that and then mm -hmm. be in a trailer with a walkie-talkie. I have a and whole a phone that's already set preset to dial nine one one. I have almost Meryl Streep in Bridges of Madison County's years of experience dealing with Florida men. I can handle it. You got this. <laughs> you got this. Almost. Yeah. No. Although I did find out this week that I'm quite a bit older than Christopher Plummer was when he was Captain Von Trapp in Sound of Music. 
And that was devastating. Was news. that heartbreaking to you? That was devastating. News. Was that heartbreaking? We were up visiting uh, <laughs> my sister Courtney and her little kids are six and four. And, yeah. Uh, Grace looked at, at uh, Darcy and said, well, how old are you? And Darcy replied and she says, how are you still alive? <laughs> it's like, oh, I don't know, kid. <laughs> I got no idea. Yeah. My favorite yeah. thing when I'm talking to the kids and I'm telling a story about when I was a kid is to just frame it as in the late 1900s when I was a kid. Yes. It always gets a laugh. In the late 1900s. Mm -hmm. I did hear this. Uh, there's all these memes going around and different things. And mm -hmm. it was the funniest thing. Something that we as kids never had to say. Mm -hmm. I lost my phone. Yes. Because it was attached to a wall. Mm -hmm. You couldn't lose your phone. You could not. Well, so when I was a teenager, cordless phones became ubiquitous. You still there were still that. corded phones, but cordless phones. And so that was a common thing in my house is where's mm -hmm. the phone? It's ringing, but someone didn't put it back on the base. Uh, and so then you can find it. And we had a couple of headsets that were never on the base. And so like they would be ringing all over the house and you can find them. Oh, we could find the phone. <laughs> Well, not in time, no, not before no, no. the answering machine picked up. We didn't have And the those. little cassette tapes We started. didn't have those kind of phones where you pulled the thing. No, yeah. ours was on the wall. Yeah. You had to be in a spot. Our corded phones were upstairs. Our cordless phones were downstairs. In a spot. Mm -mm. They were never where they were supposed to be. No, we never had those fancy things. Yeah. I didn't even think we had answering machines. When you were a kid? No. Uh, so answering machines became common when I was like, in my early teens, I think. So I was probably 45. So we had it. Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. And so um, I saw a Seinfeld episode where they had funny answering machine messages. Mm -hmm. And George Costanza's, believe it or not, George yeah. isn't at home. Yeah. So I was like, oh, that would be hilarious to put in a funny answering machine message. Mm -hmm. So I stole one from a TV show, mm -hmm. which was kind of snarky. And it was like, oh, well, <laughs> if you get a call back, then we like you. And if you don't, then. <laughs> um, so I changed it. Didn't tell my parents. My grandfather called, who did not have the same sense of humor as I did and left a very salty message. And that's how my parents found out that the phone that my dad's business associates would use to call him <laughs> had this very snarky teenage voice on it. Um, yeah, I got in a lot of trouble. Yeah, and I had to, I had to get grounded. I had to issue. I never got grounded. I had to call my grandfather oh. and personally apologize. And that's worse. I would have rather been. I, if I had been the guy, I would have just, I would have written you a letter back then. Yes. Just to you. Yes. And said, I'm not happy about this, mm -hmm. but I decided as payback to my child, my child mm -hmm. and their spouse mm -hmm. that this should go on <laughs> for as long as possible, for as long <laughs> as possible until they figure it out. However, I'm very mm -hmm. upset with you and I expect a letter back apologizing to me. Yeah. I would have done it all that way with a $20 bill. By the way, tell your, your mom, mm -hmm. your dad, that this was just me writing you a letter, giving you 20 bucks Yeah, for creativity. Oh, it's bad. The it's best bad ever reaction. voicemail ever, ever, ever in the history of voicemails on TV ever answering machine was Jim Rockford's. It started every single show. Okay. This is Jim Rockford and, you know, blah, 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 beep. And then somebody would leave a message. Mm -hmm. Some of them pertained to something in the show. Some didn't. Some were just, hey, you're late. You owe me 40 bucks. Yeah. I'm going to be here. Whatever, but it was just funny kind of stuff because that was right when answering machines were kind of taken off. Yeah. The Rockford Files. Jim Rockford. The Rockford Files. James Garner. I had to like roll back in my memory banks to try and remember a character named Rockford. I got there before your story was over. All right. <laughs> I went slow for you because so, you're younger. Landlines with answering machines mm -hmm. were an excellent device for comedy shows back in the day. Mm -hmm. Like it's just, I mean, it was an excellent way of. It was just moving the, the action forward. The comedy of errors that <laughs> yeah. could happen out of the entry machine or the phone that had two lines, like in Seinfeld. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, my yeah. God, I can hear everything on the other one. Oh, my God, I can hear everything on the other one. Like that <laughs> yeah. one was really. Guess yeah. we tricked her. Yeah, guess we tricked her, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Ah. A storyline right. for an episode that couldn't be made today. <laughs> that is correct. You could not make that today. Yep. No. Um, okay. This is a layup question for Barbara Jean. All right, An answer the comments. absolute layup question for Barbara Jean. Mm -hmm. Five questions Monday. We might do six if we get all the way through the five of them. You are only allowed to wear one color in your outfits from now until the end of your life. 
Barbara Jean, please don't get this wrong. <laughs> what color is that? She's already answered. It just hasn't popped up I yet. I'm know. sure. I'm waiting on the answer. What, um, what would your color what be? What color would mine be? So my two favorite colors are teal and purple, mm -hmm. or like a turquoise and a purple. Um, but so like purple. Yeah. Uh, but like browns and greens look really nice with my eyes. Mm -hmm. So maybe I would pick green just for complementary color to my coloring. Yep. Uh, Give me your very thought out answer about your coloring I mean, and what looks I just, best on you. I, I, I don't like, I, people have said black. You're going blue, right? But black is really hot and I'm on construction sites all yeah. the time. So more than likely it is going to be blue because there's <laughs> lots of shades of blue. But um, the only other one would be gray, but there's not enough shades of gray. Yeah. So blue. I'll go blue. Yeah. It works Did with your Barbara eyes. Did Barbara Jean get it right? Yes, but Kenny Shh. was able to answer before Barbara Jean got it in. Yeah. So Kenny answered purple and then replied for Barbara Jean. <laughs> <laughs> Barbara Jean says purple. We get dark blue from Bobby, gray from Melissa, black from Keely, Tim Cosgrove. Taylor Swift likes black too, Tim. Susan Johnson and Keely. Black like my soul. Kathy. <laughs> yeah. I always make that joke with my husband. Mm -hmm. There are 50 shades of gray, Melissa. There are 50 yes. shades of gray. Unfortunately, I'm not a rich man. You're also married, so you don't need to be a rich man. I'm not a rich man. All right. Um, I was watching something this week. It was a, um, a show of a, a guy riding down the road, uh -huh. and there was a car carrier on the side of the road with the platform down yeah and it said you know as a guy you have to tell me you haven't thought about this and the next thing was a scene of the dukes of hazard going over one of those flying away yeah. right making sticking the landing in the yeah. car the general lee so if you could have any car or truck on a tv show or a movie mm -hmm. what car or truck would I'll you pull have? it up. I so expect, you I give, you give an Rider, answer. Huh? You give your answer. I'll pull up a picture uh, of mine. Give my answer. Yeah. Um, man, you know, this is kind of bad. I, I I might want the van. In the earlier days, I never would have wanted this. Uh-huh. Um, but I, I probably would want the van from the A-team at this point in time. <laughs> yeah. The way things are going, it's like, I'll just take the van from the A-team. So this would be mine. Is that the Steve McQueen? It's the 72 Corvette mm -hmm. uh, Stingray 350 C3 from Rush Hour. Okay. That would be mine. That was the first time I ever saw that vehicle was in the movie Rush Hour. Yep. And I was like, yeah, that's my dream car right there. At one time, I thought I would want the James Bond from uh, the car from... Fast and Martin? No, no, from the Spy Who Loved Me. <laughs> Barbara Bach was on that. Yeah. Um, but... <laughs> I think about at my age trying to get in and out of that car. And I'm like, yeah. no way. I'll, I would have to set up all kinds. Herbie yeah. the love bug is a great That's one. a great answer. We had a, we had a Trans Am from Smokey and the Bandit. Yep. My son wants a bug. Mm -hmm. As his first car, he wants a VW bug. And we asked him why. And he said, because it would make everyone happy who plays Slug a Bug. Yes. So he just wants to bring his smile to everyone's face with his first car. Yes. Like I can support that. Yeah. Batman's car. Go to go to mm -hmm. the classic car museum and you can Which see Batman's the Batman car. The 1970s oh, version, the Michael that's Keaton a good version, question. the version that was in um, Christian Bale. Yeah. So which Batman's car? Because there's been a lot of Batman's cars. If I had to pick a Batmobile for myself, it would probably be Keaton's Batmobile. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. The classic Batmobile was so cool, though. It was black and red. It was so cool, though. Yeah. It was right. campy. It was campy. It was very campy. Yeah. I just like the show because Batgirl was in it. <laughs> not going to lie. There's a theme. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. The spy who was not, it? Spy who loved me. The spy who loved me. I didn't yeah, see that one. Of, I saw the spy who shagged me, but I don't think Austin all, Powers' car. That should. was not. That was the same movie, but it, did, it was just different. <laughs> yeah, it's trust just me, different. Trust me, uh, Roger Moore did much better than um, than Austin than Powers. Austin Powers, yes, the yeah. '70s car, Kathy, nice. of course. Yeah. All right. It was cool. It had like this giant flamethrower out the back. <laughs> Kenny's got another game. Uh, punch bug or the Tesla titty twister. 
That is not a game I can play with my uh, kids. <laughs> I would highly recommend you keep that just on date night. The cop car at the end of Smokey uh, and the Bandit. Nice. The cop car at the end of Smokey and the Bandit was awesome. Yeah. There wasn't much left of it. <laughs> kind of like the, the vehicle at the end of Gone in 60 Seconds. Mike Henry was the son. He is a, a football player. He played um, He played in some Tarzan movies. There's a couple. It was in at least one John Wayne movie. I can't remember if it was Rio Bravo or Rio Lobo, mm -hmm. but he's in one of those, and it was good. Barbara Jean, was your 72 Super Beetle? Was it purple? Please tell me it was purple. I don't think they had purple as a no, color come back then. On. But it was white or gray. What, the I'm Shelby going Barbara Jean's was white or gray. Yeah. The Shelby in which gone in 60 seconds, Susan? <laughs> well, and I don't know what Shelby, the one that ran through all the racks or the one that came out of the car yeah. wash. I mean, it's kind of important. You want the car wash one. You want at the, the car end. wash one. You want the car wash one yeah. at the end, for sure. So mine is a 72 Corvette Stingray. Okay, we got a hustle. We got nine minutes. All right. Uh, cutest animal you have ever seen in person. Cutest animal I've ever cutest seen. Cutest animal. I've seen a lot of really cute animals. Mm -hmm. Dolphins, whales, mm -hmm. spiders. Yep. Oh, I'm, I gotta go sloth. They just have the cutest little baby face. I'll pull it up because I'm sure you have not looked in the eyes of a sloth in a while. Uh, <laughs> I, <guess> I haven't. <laughs> They've I cut the cutest little haven't. cartoon character face. Look at this. They're so cute. That's just amazing. I'm assuming you That's saw that down in Central animal. America while doing I your dolphin that. counting survey. No. Well, I did see one in Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. And I hate these stupid cookie things. Yeah. Um, I saw one when I was in Costa Rica. And I also recently got to snuggle one in Honduras. Snuggle one. Mm -hmm. no I thanks. can pull up a picture of snuggling one, too. Candy apple red. I was wrong. I had it at white. Ooh, candy apple red. That was white. Um, probably there's a bunch of um, <laughs> Andy wins. <My> <laughs> Andy wins. That's oh, it. Wow. Um, That's awkward. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, there's some little chipmunks uh, that little are up chipmunks. in. Um, they're not chipmunks. They're called something else. They're up in uh -huh. Canada, um, in Western Canada. And I thought those things, they were all over the place. Mm -hmm. You just had to sit there and they would just all kind of be out running around, but those were really, really cool. Yeah. Those, um, yeah, there are. Tim, when Tim was in Panama, he was wearing his favorite color. <laughs> yeah. Khaki green. Khaki. Yes. He's wearing khakis. Yep. I'll keep finding the, I'll keep looking for the sloth picture. The sloth picture, which you'll put out there. We can keep Okay. Moving. Um, Mother's Day was Sunday. Yep. So. One of the fondest memories that you have about your mom or someplace you went with your mom, mm -hmm. just a, a great memory about your mom. So one thing that always makes me smile is when she would take us out of school for a doctor's appointment. After the doctor's appointment, regardless mm -hmm. of what it was, we were going to McDonald's for Sundays, hot fudge Sundays. Mm -hmm. And so I can't take my kids to the doctor without going for hot fudge Sundays, And so that one's one that always makes me smile. But then she and I always had a game whenever we were walking around a shopping area, whatever, anytime there's a jewelry store with a window, we walk up to the jewelry store window and mm -hmm. we pick out the one thing if we could have in the case, just mm -hmm. one. If we could walk away with one thing, no questions asked, what would it be? And so we've played this game in other countries. We've been in Tiffany's, like mm -hmm. just your average shopping mall, jewelry stores. It's yeah. just really fun. And cool. I do that with my girls now, but there aren't shopping malls anymore. No, there are not. Well, not, not like there used this, to be. Out of this online catalog. <laughs> yeah, right. What thing would you want to have? It's more so, fun when you're there. It's fun when you're in person and in the store. So, oh, okay. and, and I have so many uh, great memories of mm -hmm. my mom. Yeah. Uh, when I was playing basketball in high school, you always knew where my mom was in the stands. <laughs> yeah. My friends would tell me, I, I never know where my parents are, but I always know where your mom <laughs> is in the stands. I um, aspire to be that parent. <laughs> yeah, I always. And then uh, the other, and then my mom would get mad about this story, but when we were learning to swim, uh -huh. we would start on the side of the pool at the YMCA downtown. It's no yeah. longer there. And there were lanes. 
and mom would go out like two lane lines in the pool mm -hmm. and you'd be like, okay, just swim to me. And yeah. like, You're not going to back up. I'm not going to back up. I won't back up. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> I promise you I won't back up. Yep. And to teach us to swim across the pool, of course she backed up. Mm -hmm. And as you're swimming, gasping for air, thinking you're going to die if you don't get to your mom who's backing up, yeah. you're seeing her back in every line you're going three, four, yep. five. Well, hell, I might as well go to the wall. Yeah. I mean, I'm not here I'm now. here now, yeah. I'm here now, I might as well go. To which she would say, see, I knew you could do it. Yep. So, yeah, that mom was always, uh, the whole rest of uh, things she taught us was like, stuff like that. So yeah. it's just awesome. There's the sloth. There's the sloth. All right. I told you I could find it. Look how cute he is. Yes. I mean, don't look at me, but look at the sloth. The sloth is cute. All right. Uh, best opening band you've seen at a concert. Mm -hmm. So you went for the headliner and you're like, ah, maybe the opening band's going to be good. Maybe not. But best opening band that you have seen. All right. Um, so the one recently mm -hmm. would, and sort of recently, like within the past 10 years, I think, yep. um, would be Wellesley Arms, which isn't a well-known band. No, I have no idea. But we went are. to the Compadres tour with... Um, we're there to see Need to Breathe. I really wanted to see the mm -hmm. band Need to Breathe. And Good they were songs. fantastic. They did a fantastic show. Uh, Matt yep. Kearney was in that uh, tour as well. But Wellesley Arms was one of the opening acts. And that's one of the few times that we went out and we bought the CD for the opening mm -hmm. acts. So, cool. yeah, that would probably be one of them. So I have two. Um, went to go see Pat Benatar at the amphitheater. Mm -hmm. Oreo Speedwagon Open. Pat Benatar, yeah. not any good. Uh, was a really disappointing concert. Are you uh -huh. Speedwagon rocked? Yeah. Just absolutely rocked. Yeah. And I was not a big REO Speedwagon fan. And I was like, these guys really put everything into their performance. They had fun. But the, the main one went to go see, um, oh gosh, dog it, Tim, uh, Tim McGraw in Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. Probably in the, I would say, early 2000s, late 90s. Yeah. This young guy was opening up for him named Kenny Chesney. Yeah. Not a huge name at the time. Mm -hmm. Like one hit. And my brother who bought the tickets for Darcy and I go to the concert, like you're going to go as a Tim McGraw fan, but you're going to come back as a Kenny Chesney fan. Yeah. And it was like, yep, you were 100% right. <laughs> yes, I did Kenny that. Chesney was great, a lot of fun. And so to me, that was the best overall opening act I've ever seen. Because yeah. I left like, okay, I'm a huge fan of this person. I had no idea who they were. Yeah. So the first concert I ever went to, I went to um, the Hartford, Connecticut stop on mm -hmm. the Family Values 2001 tour. And that the big the big name that was on it that year was Stone Temple Pilots. And I had no interest in seeing them. Yeah. Um, but I went because I wanted to see Linkin Park and I wanted to see Stained in concert. Mm -hmm. And so I guess you could call them the opening acts, but for me, they were the whole reason I went. And okay. so we were like, okay, well, let's see what Stone, Stone Temple Pilots does. They came out with a megaphone and he screamed through a megaphone, which sounds terrible, but he held the microphone in front of the megaphone and screamed through the megaphone into the microphone. And we're like, out, that's, that's terrible. It was a horrible assault on the ears. So we very much enjoyed Lincoln Park and Stained. Uh, we walked out on Stone Temple Pilots yeah. and we went home. <laughs> yes, there have been a few concerts I've walked out on. Uh, yeah. Bruce Springsteen was one of them. Yeah. And it was free. <laughs> it was free well, that's, and I left. That's lower stakes. I mean, that's that hurts less to walk out when it was a free, a free deal. Yeah, I was like, nope, I'm out. Yeah. So, um, Tomorrow morning, the morning show is on. They are. Tomorrow afternoon, the one, the only, the incomparable Davey will be here. Yes, baby. So we, I have all kinds of stuff I've been saving like for two weeks mm -hmm. to quiz, question, and query Davey on. So yes. I have all of that stuff. Uh, very much. Are we talking to about Taylor Swift's 87th stop on the Eras tour where Travis Kelsey came to visit her in Paris? Only if we have to. <laughs> Tim... Tim, give your liver a good night's rest, mm -hmm. buddy. You're going to need it for tomorrow's yep. show. Take some supplements. Oh, uh, yeah. Get, get some, get some uh, what is that, uh, recovery IV? 
Yeah, recovery IV is the the rehydrator. Yeah, whatever they are, Tim, the IV product, get somebody. You're going to need them tomorrow because what's your name is going to be mentioned a lot of times. Distillers and uh, wine connoisseurs and beer reps, they swear by a supplement called NAC to help support your liver. So do that. NAC, okay. Yep. Cool. Helps your liver. Helps your liver. All right, (laughs) you guys have an amazing eve. Thank you for all the comments. Thank you for everybody tonight. And we will be back tomorrow. Bye. Thank you.